What's up YouTube, Don Quarantz here today, bring a brand new video. Finally got a few extra minutes to introduce the newest member of my fleet. This is a 1990 BMW 325i. Uh, as you can see, it's a four-door sedan and it's automatic. Uh, it's got about 230,000 kilometers on the odometer and uh, I picked it up for 2300 uh, Canadian and I put a little bit of uh, a little bit of money into it so far trying to diagnose a no start issue that cropped up after I'd been driving it for about a week so um, I'll just do a little tour of the car um, let you let you guys take a look um, the car like I said is in absolutely great shape not a lot of dents you know really 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 minor uh, panel dentage on the uh, on the doors you know um, little little stuff like this here on the trunk this little dent here or uh, not, a little, not a little dent right there but other than that it's in extremely good condition um, previous owner obviously did some paint work you can see right here there's a paint line from uh, from when they did the lower uh, section of the doors here uh, which is pretty pretty common spot for rust issues down along the bottom here so uh, you know that's that's pretty much the most noticeable issues on the car there's not a lot of rust at all really really minor stuff like things like up in here you know you got a little bit of rust or you know down down up in that uh, you know door crack you got a little bit of rust but nothing serious at all um, the interior of the car is in absolutely fantastic condition I love how it's black. Um, the thing that really sold me uh, on this for the winter was the uh, the heated seat options. I didn't know that that was an option. I didn't really think that a car this old would have that. My coupe definitely doesn't have it. Um, but the interior overall is in excellent shape. Uh, you can see the black uh, leather has really stood up. Um, we get really hot summers here with a lot of sun and uh, fading is definitely a serious problem. Uh, where I'm at so it's really nice to see that these aren't really faded or whatever I did hit it with a little leather conditioner uh, when I got it probably do that another time or two uh, before I start really driving the car but you know you can see the dash isn't cracked you know uh, everything is just super super fresh the carpet is really clean um, there's no rust you know there's no rust down here um, really really happy with the condition of the vehicle um, the back seats are a little bit uh, a little little bit rough I was gonna hit these uh, with some more uh, leather conditioner get this uh, this fold down armrest uh, a little bit more flush in there it just seems like there's a an issue with one of the hinges on the inside so uh, the seat here does sit more flush in I just had it pulled out to uh, access the uh, fuel pump over there um, so yeah, bear bear with me on that. That's uh, that'll be installed uh, firmly later on. But um, overall, super super clean. The roof is really clean. A little bit of sagging on the uh, the sunroof panel here, right in the corner. You can see it's a little bit bunched up. That's kind of been preventing the sunroof from, from uh, closing properly, really smoothly. Um, the sunroof actually does have a little bit of rust on the panel. Uh, you can see it's been repaired before. And uh, that's something that I'm going to be uh, addressing at some point. Um, obviously, because this is a winter vehicle, I'm not really going to be using the sunroof a whole lot. So that's not really a big deal for me. But one thing I do know is that to get out that sunroof panel, you got to drop the whole headliner. And to drop the headliner, you got to take out the rear windshield or the rear window. So that's kind of a pain in the ass, but not really a big, uh, big deal. Uh, I know a lot of guys do it. So... Um, that, that'll be uh, something to do later on. One thing that I notice actually, and I notice this in my coupe too, that really drives me nuts is the uh, the seat belt. So the seat belt clip, the buckle, is actually twisted on here. So anytime you go to put the seat belt on, you've always got a twisted, twisted seat belt. I don't know if this was just an 80s uh, or late 80s slash early 90s thing that's going on. Like I said, it's like this in my coupe too. Uh, to me, this when it's flat it shouldn't it shouldn't be twisted like this it should just it should just be flush so anyway that's that's one thing that really uh kind of annoys me maybe i can figure out a way to just unhook this down here and spin this around so it is flush all the time like this um but you know that's something i can figure out later on um 
the sound system has been replaced with this piece of crap deck. Uh, it doesn't really work very well, so I've got a spare that I'm going to be throwing in there. Got it for real cheap at Canadian Tire, so if you're looking for a cheap deck and you're in Canada, Canadian Tire is always a good spot to check out. They don't sell a lot of their stuff, so they do put things on clearance a lot, so I was able to pick up a pretty decent uh, Kenwood deck for about 70 bucks. So just going to swap that out. Uh, the CD player actually doesn't work in this right now, so I'm going to be doing that swap for that purpose. Hopefully the CD player will function uh, properly when I wire it up. But uh, other than that, I'll let you take a look under the hood. Um, it's really clean under the hood, but like I, uh, actually, I don't know if I said this already, but the car stopped running on me about a week after I bought it. Uh, and since then, I've replaced a bunch of things, trying to, you know, troubleshoot the no start. Um, I've replaced the intake boot. When you get the car, check out the intake boot. Uh, these rubber boots do wear out pretty frequently. Uh, down most of the time in the middle of these uh, ribs right here So, uh, you know if you've got holes or whatever and you don't want to replace the piece right away You can always take some gasket sealant and put it in there seal up those holes uh, That's just a temporary fix before you replace it. This part is really cheap you can get one for like 15 bucks off uh, uh, Rock Auto also uh, I replaced the fuel pump uh, the uh, fuel filter um, I uh, took out when I took off the uh, intake boot, I cleaned out the uh, throttle body there a little bit. Uh, I, I know that I should have taken off the uh, intake control valve and cleaned that out a little bit more. But uh, either way, I'm, I'm getting through the diagnostics. You know, I got a few more things to check out before I really figure out what's not working here. Right now, though, uh, I think I'm leaning towards the uh, cam position sensor, which I'm pretty sure is... Uh, that sensor down there that's like right in the middle of the screen you can't I don't know if you can see it that well right in the middle down there um, and supposedly that might be preventing this uh, the car from starting I'm not hundred percent sure I do have spark at the ignition coil uh, I read on a forum though that uh, the uh, ignition coil uh, if it's sparking then that means that you got to replace the camshaft sensor not the crankshaft sensor but I'm still having a hard time figuring out whether or not this car even has a camshaft sensor. So uh, that's something I got to look into. Either way, uh, you know, the, the, the engine bay area is pretty, pretty clean. Uh, not spectacular, but uh, definitely decent for, uh, for what I paid for the vehicle. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy about the car. You know, I really like the color. Uh, you know, at first I was kind of like, what have I done? I bought a, a red BMW. Uh, you know to drive in the winter time what kind of an idiot am I but um, the red has really grown on me the car has actually now been dubbed little big red um, because of that and uh, yeah I'm just really really excited to get the car running uh, you know and be ripping around this in the winter time um, you know I, I if the car came with these winter wheels on it with these winter tires I have a spare set of uh, rims that I bought for my coupe that I was gonna throw on these but I'm actually uh, hitting the strut in the front, so I wasn't able to put those on for the you know the few days that I was driving the car al already. But you know, with the winters, I should be all right during the winter time. Uh, I'm just going to rotate them around so the one in the front with the really fat tread comes in the back, and uh, also going to think about putting some weights in the uh, the trunk for uh, a little added traction. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with that yet. Uh, you know, I could do something like toss in some cinder blocks or whatever, just something to get a little bit of extra weight, uh, you know, back on these back wheels here. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's really it. Uh, you know, I'm really, really excited about it. Like I said, um, for a 1990, this thing is in great shape. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of research before I bought my coupe and my coupe is a 86, so it has the metal bumpers and I, I definitely like these, uh, plastic bumpers a lot more. Than the metal ones but uh even more than these plastic i like those euro bumpers with the chrome uh trim all on it so you know if, uh, if you're looking at replacing your bumpers and you want something uh, a little bit fancy with a little bit of a bling and that chrome on it definitely take a look at the uh the euro bumpers i believe they're available through uh uh, I can't even remember what website, but if you look around online, you'll find it. You'll find them. There's not a lot of places that sell them, so I'm sure uh, it shouldn't be hard to figure it out. But, but again, yeah, that's pretty much it. 1990 BMW 325i with uh, 230,000 on the odometer.